Hello and welcome. My name is Tim Shank. And I'm Brian McAvoy. This is Two Cyborgs and a Microphone. I'm cyborg number one. And I'm cyborg number two. And we have a microphone. That's all I need to say about that. Today, we're going to talk about project management. It sounds like a boring subject, but if you've ever had to rip all the wires out of a project or rewrite a ton of code due to poor planning, I think you'll agree it's worth listening to. Yeah, and in, in, in my in my professional life or my job, I've been involved in several very large projects. They're on a much bigger scale than most biohackers will ever deal with, but the concepts, some of the concepts at least, still apply. Now, I make sure when I have a good idea, I can record it. If I have a good way to approach something, I make darn sure that I remember later. Like, next to my bed, I've got a space pen that can write in any orientation and some paper, so even if I wake up, I can write upside down without getting off my back. Next to my shower, there's a dry erase board, and I always have my phone. So if I think of something good, I'm not gonna let that idea get away from me. And I tend to use spreadsheets for everything. Those are awesome, because you know, they're they're programmable, they're they're versatile, yeah. You you uploaded a project plan, and this is from, you, you told me this is from one of the biohack guys. No, the biohack.me guys, right? Well, it might be in collaboration with Cursor from the Dangerous Minds podcast. The idea here, and this is something you and I have talked about in the past, that we both think it'd be cool because you and I both have RFID implants and NFC, and we understand the versatility and the function and just how cool it is to have method of identifying yourself to a computer, but of course they're very limited range. You need to be right on top of the reader, usually touching it, because the tags inside your body, their range is limited. But there are long-range passive RFID tags, and long-range can usually, under ideal conditions, end up with a range of about uh, Bluetooth. Are you sure about that, Brian? I've, I've read something different, that you can get up to 20 feet from some of these these industrial readers. But one thing I want to I want to say is that's getting kind of specific when we're talking about project management. And there's so many other things that that do involve projects. Sure, and we'll we'll keep this as as generalized as possible. If we have an example, it'll at least let people kind of follow along with something in their minds and and they're we we invite you guys to think of your own project and apply it to this as we're going through it. So if you need to pause and rustle up the notes on, on your latest inspiration, please do so. And that's actually what I have for step one. It's have an idea. You know, that that's easy. Uh, in my case, I desperately want a long-range RFID somewhere in my body. And this will, like I said, have all the advantages of being able to identify myself to a machine. My house, probably for starters, I wanted to un- automatically unlock my door and maybe put some hot water on for tea. What would you do with it, Tim? What would you, what would your smart house do as you approach the front door? Well, it would definitely identify me and unlock. Under certain circumstances, it depends. Because if I'm in if I'm in the yard or something doing yard work, I don't want my door to be repeatedly unlocking and locking as I walk by the front door. So, can we can we can we back up and and get to some kind of basics? So instead of going with a specific example here, let's talk about what do you need before you ever start. And I think that comes down to what in my in my professional career is requirements gathering. You need to clearly identify what is it you need to be have done. Would it would that be a would that I think that'd be a better approach for us. What do you think? Yeah, I think well, you're approaching this from the point of somebody who's who's done this professionally, and I'm approaching this from the point of some guy who's hacking around in his in in his garage. This is good. This this is this is some good perspective, and I and yes, I, I think we should focus on. The, the tried and true method that, that you've done. So the first thing that I know of project management is you have to identify the requirements because if you don't clearly understand exactly what you want to have done with this project, whether it's software development, whether it's a marketing project or something like that, you need to have a clear bounds on what is success. Because without that, you, you're always left in this gray area. Could I have done better? Could I have done worse? And you can always have done better. And you, you, you will always be challenged with doing worse. 
But if you set some clear requirements, so these are the three things that must happen for this to be considered a success. So in, in the context of our example, with a long range RFID, you would, you would say, I need it to identify myself, identify me from a distance of some amount, of time, amount and then activate certain electronics so you'd have a clear definition of this is what the project is. So I think the first stage is to very clearly and write it out exactly what the success, what, what makes this a success. And in my, my terminology and, and where I come from, that's, that's requirements gathering. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. There's been a lot of people I've, I've encountered who have this pie in the sky idea and they're like, yeah, I want comic book superpowers and i guess that's a, an idea of success but they they have no idea of of what they're really asking and so yeah th that's the first hurdle to overcome yeah i think the first question to that person would be is exactly what superpower i mean, I mean you, you, if you don't put some definition it's going to be really difficult to even get started because there, if you say I want all of this, these this this broad general thing, you're never going to know how to take those first steps. After requirements gathering, I think I think then comes you have to scope the projects. You have to decide, okay, these are the things that we want done, and these are this is this, and I think that comes that comes to the point of where you're defining the scope of the project. So you're saying these are all the things I want done, and this is this is the wholeness of that. Thomas Eggy of the bio, biohack.me forum, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his screen name correctly, he has a biohacking idea evaluation flowchart. And this is basically what people should read before they post on biohack.me. It's kind of whimsical, it's kind of snarky, and it should definitely be followed because all those people who are like, yeah, I want to be Superman, cool, bro. But you have no idea how to get there. Hopefully he'll get this biohacking flowchart reposted. It could silence a lot of noise. I think so too. And, that, and that's, that's another, it kind of goes back to those clearly, defi clearly defining the project because that's key. To, to leave any, if you're, if you're going to be successful, you need to have everything clearly defined. And when we, the first thing we talked about was requirements gathering and scoping, which correlates with the requirements. So I think once you have those requirements identified, you can start to define a path. Okay, these are the ways that we can get to this deliverable is another corporate term, you know, another corporate mm -hmm. project term that I've used. And once you do that, then you can start figuring out what you need, what resources you need, including technology, what kind of budget you have, what, what other maybe roles you need to bring into it to actually figure out how to get it done. I, I think the first thing is you define your objectives and your your requirements. You you scope it so you you have that clearly defined, and then you identify what does it take to get there. And that I think those those starting with that is is going to make fifty percent. It takes fifty percent of the work away. Uh -huh. And then from there you can start to schedule and and you know you you can start to define a schedule. Say how how far do I want to get at certain time frames and things like that. Now with biohacking, there's a pretty specific set of things that you need to overcome. You need to understand the biology. You need to understand the electronics if you're using them. And Brian, you've done a lot of work towards your towards like your implantable your implantable compass. Yeah, mostly that's been mechanical. I haven't even gotten to the point where it's a wearable. So things like coatings, that's eh, out of the scope right now. I'd like to step through your steps that you've outlined so far with the long range RFID project. So what, what was your first step? The first step is to define the requirements. So there is a reason and a, a, a end goal to the project. And then we talked about three, as, as you mentioned, to be able to identify you correctly, to activate something when it correctly identifies you. And what was the third? I don't think we had a third. Well, okay. So still, it's, that, that's what we wanted to do. And what was the next step in your process? Well, scoping, which is, it kind of applies to how broad the project is. So it, I guess in these terms, to scope it, you would say for what purposes? Where, what are all the ways that we're going to use this? 
So the, the main thing is to identify, identify the person, identify you, and then to activate a, other electronic devices. So we would want to define what sorts of electronic devices are we going to activate. Okay. Let's say, hypothetically, that when it correctly identifies you for the first time in 20 minutes, it will close a relay. And we'll, we'll let the other smart electronics connected to that relay figure out what to do with that data. We, we've got a pretty, pretty clear scope of how it should behave. Absolutely. So now, from that point, we can define what resources we need to get that done. So we need the RFID tag, we need the reader, right? We right. said we need, the, we need the relay. And then we need devices that connect to that relay, to, to, to read the state of that relay. Mm -hmm. So there's our resources. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is, this is sometimes easy to define and hard to procure. So the, sure. these long range RFID readers I've looked at are $300 at minimum, which, hey, if I knew this was going to work, I'd go buy it. I'd have already purchased it. But I don't. So it's kind of a risk. You know, to a, a corporation, $300 might be a drop in the bucket. To Brian McAvoy, $300 is not a drop in the bucket. Right, and to Tim Shank, too. Mm -hmm. I know that guy. He's a cheap ass. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'll probably cut that out. I'm not going to. So now that we know, now that we have this project scope, we have the resources that we need, now we'd be able to start shopping. We know the main components that we're looking for, at least to get the, the reader part of it done. And that's pretty simple. I mean, you got the RFID tag, you got the, the reader, and you got the relay. Mm -hmm. So that's three, one fairly expensive piece, and then one that's complex to to implant. Up until this point, we have been, we've already broken it into two parts w without even thinking about it. There's this whole, how do we get it working electrically? And then there's this whole implant side to it. And that's almost its own project, which is just getting something that's implantable. It, it's important to notice that, that we're breaking it down intentionally. Absolutely. And and then we have different, and now we're kind of coming up to different stages of the project. Because we know, we know we can do the relay. That's a piece of cake. And the reader, we know how those work. It's a matter of, there's a matter of finding the resources to get one which for 300 or more dollars. So that, those parts, we understand the, what we need to do that. Now we, now we would kind of fall back and say, stage one for any of this is we need to have an implantable RFID tag that works at long ranges. So now we can start to break that piece out as a different stage because the other parts we know that they're, you know, no brainers really. We can get that done. Yeah, I'm very confident as an industrial automator that, yeah, I could probably get some industrial hardware to talk to a Raspberry Pi or something. Sure. Now we're starting to get into the stages and this, and, and we, this kind of goes back to the schedule. So now we need, to, we can start looking at, we know what we need to do. We know most of the complexities of it and where most of the work is, and we know that we need to schedule. We you kind, of, kind of talk about the schedule. We know what needs to come first, second, third. The first thing we do, we could develop the reader and, and, and the relay and, and have instant feedback on that so that we could start testing the RFID tag and then plan it, you know, and planning it. We talk, you and I talked about putting it in a chicken wing or something. Yeah, these these are the kind of the things you need to think about. I think. I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to actually scope out this whole project and and really define it in our podcast here. Yeah, we all, we we wouldn't know all the problems that would crop up unless we actually do it because Murphy's law is around every corner. But at least it starts giving you know us and the people who are listening the i the the sense of of the sort of planning that you need to do to really have a successful project. You really need to start thinking systematically. What is the overall goal? How do I get there in which step? So one of the first steps in, in this project would be to, to identify which tag can be implanted and read at, at a distance. So that would, you know, that would be stage one. Once you have that, then you can start using that against your reader with the relay to get some feedback to say exactly, to find out exactly what problems you're gonna encounter with this this sort of product. Yeah, you're going to find that RF does not like going through water, and there's a lot of water in a human. So you might find that after you put it inside of a chicken breast, not even to test biocompatibility, that you you lose some of your range by having it in flesh. My, my first thought of where I would plant this is in my back, because there's not a lot of nerves in my back, so it, it should be an easy implant. 
And as I'm walking towards my door, that means that there's half a foot of, of flesh between that tag and the reader. That could be a problem. That could be a big problem. Does that mean I have to relocate the tag? Does it mean I need a reader in a different place? Does it mean I need a different reader? So we don't know. At least we've conceived the problem before encountering it. And so another thing that kind of goes, it, it kind of supports what we're talking about here, is to define milestones. So rather than saying, okay, it's only successful when we, when we succeed, you can define certain milestones. So one of those milestones would be to come up with the tag and the placement. Once you come up with the tag and the placement that works, you could say, well, I'm going to check that off my list. We know where, what kind of tag we need. We need to know where it's going to be placed. Mm -hmm. a, sec a second milestone would be to define that, to, to define which reader you wanted to buy. You know, so there's that there's that's another another concept that is in I, I deal with that in in bigger projects for for in a corporate you know a large corporation, but we define smaller little bites of success. Yeah, my programming teacher used to say, "How do you cook an elephant?" That was his question he'd ask once a week, and you cook an elephant by chopping it into small pieces. Exactly. There's a lot of what I do in in my work that does not apply. It's just, it's, it's different. You're dealing with multiple people. All Everybody has a different role and stuff like that. So I, I get a little bit out of our scope for this conversation for what most biohackers would ever need to do when, when I start thinking about this stuff. And there's steps I can think of that probably wouldn't apply. Your approach is usually to have a finished product, like a straight line to that finished project. A lot of biohacking is going to have a wearable somewhere in there. Like I would probably make a bracelet or a necklace or something, or maybe a necklace that hung on my back where it would be implanted, you know, for, for all this testing to see how it performs on a daily basis. And that might necessarily apply to a corporate project. Yeah, and I think that kind of goes to, to like the stages that you could go through. Mm -hmm. I mean, one is, I mean, a stage could be just to develop a wearable version before you ever even think about implanting it, make sure it works if it's just hanging there. Yeah. So if it doesn't work there, then it's gonna be it's gonna be a sad truth when you get that implanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's Painful. there's a level of dedication to uh to biohacking that you have to overcome. So I, I think that's what I got for this conversation. I mean from my background. I think that you have a lot more that you that we could start talking about with like Thomas I I Eggy 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 T H O M A S capital E G I. What you know his his project plan is much more specific, much more specific to biohacking, and does have some of the same concepts, but I think there's a lot in there that that I would miss from my perspective. His it it's designed to be where, how should I post my idea on biohack? So it's it's kind of think before you speak, don't clutter up the forums with noise, and just understand that there is a certain level of technology that exists, and there's a certain level of technology that is just sci-fi and made to look really good in movies. And I, I'd encourage anybody who's listening to do some, some some basic research on like project management basics or project management for dummies, just to get a handle on what it takes to get a big project done, and then scale it back from there and say, okay, I don't need to, I don't need to identify the roles that are involved in this project because it's just me, you know, things like that. So thank you for listening. We'd like to invite our listeners to email us at cyborgs at twocyborgs .com. That's a change but the old one should work for quite a while longer. You can also shoot either of us an email at tim at twocyborgs.com or brian at twocyborgs.com. We are in the process of updating our brand new site, twocyborgs.com. You can put two cyborgs on your back. We have the hooded sweatshirts with the two cyborgs logo in all of its glory. I have one. I love it. I wear it around. My cat loves it because she can curl up on me and it's all warm and toasty. But the question in my mind is, do you wear your two cyborgs shirt while you're drinking coffee out of your two cyborgs mug? Yes. You do? Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> Please support our podcast by picking up some of this cool merch. This is Brian McAvoy. And this is Tim Shank. <laughs>
You have been listening to Two Cyborgs in the Microphone, brought to you by two cyborgs who coincidentally have a microphone. Like, follow, share, plus one, and don't forget to subscribe on any of the popular podcast services, including Google Play Music, iTunes, and Stitcher. Help us move up the podcast ladder by subscribing and commenting on iTunes. Yeah, comment. Commenting on iTunes. I'll say it again. Commenting on iTunes is very, very important. And now, we're also on Twitter. At Two Cyborgs. Retweet that. Please do. Yeah, I try to put some jokes on there on, on Mondays to start your week off. So check it out. Thanks for listening. <laughs>